podcast character designs done by Demon Artie. Be sure to follow her over on Twitter at Artie Demon. Welcome everyone back to the Crimson 15 Podcast. I'm your host, Crimson Sin. Yeah, 15 PCA. Be sure to check us out over on Twitter at C15 Podcast. Join the discussion over on Discord. Link in the description below. And if you're enjoying the videos, be sure to sub, like, share, and hit that bell for notifications. Star Trek Discovery Season 3, Episode 3, People of Earth. Uh, Jonathan Franks directed this episode in an... Sorry, I think... It... From the last episode, it took a big step backwards. It took a huge step backwards. Which wasn't good. Wasn't it great when they have witty banter? No. So much banter. Too much. This episode is so long because of the banter. Take, take, take it out, you have a half hour episode. Literally, that's how bad it was. It's. I do I do like the fact that we learned some stuff. Um, Su- Suru becomes the official captain, which is cool because he's definitely the captain. Even though, well, when we get to it, we'll talk about like he kind of has a... Ooh, it should be Michael. No, it's you, Suru. You're the captain. And we got to meet a, uh, a new character that's going to join them. And she, because they say she, I remember thinking like, it's going to be the first non-binary something trans. So I don't know what the, her deal is. But it didn't seem like they... <laughs> they did. Oh. They said she in the show. Yes. So I'm going to say she. And if that's wrong, can crucify I me. I don't care. I don't know anymore. But yeah. they said she. They said she. So that's what I'm going to say. I don't remember her name. No. I think they said it like twice. But um, thank God that the, in the opening of the episode, they didn't uh, recap the end of the season for once. Oh, well, it's the last episode, so it's a little better. <laughs> so we get Michael Burnham kind of doing uh, what happened to her during the year that she was away from the Discovery. So she just became a uh, courier, just like a book. Yeah. And they, she just went around trying to get information while she can, send out messages. It was just a front for her, yeah, basically. Just trying to get information about what happened during the burn. And she's been living with the book for a year. And she specifically mentions that he's my bestest good friend. A whole, a whole year. year. Alone. And he's not a bad looking guy. I mean, if you're he's a, a handsome, yeah, he's a handsome, handsome dude, dude who's yeah. freaking buff as hell. And there was already kind of that attraction in that very first episode. You know, a whole year, nothing. I, I'm and they, in this whole episode, the banter. Oh. They, they're, they're like, it's almost innuendo at certain points between them and it's like they're gonna freaking do it but yeah it's um they did nothing together because I, I call BS I'm saying they're not telling <laughs> and then we get because she's talking about like you know searching for everyone trying to figure out what happened everyone was stranded and um basically just like they said before all everything detonated at the same exact time across all galaxies and they showed a stupid image of a bunch of starships together it was so dumb and they all blew up and it looked really really bad yeah it did it looked stupid almost but, but it's so weird because in an episode they said it only uh, they said it might affect you on warp well, they were standing still so how did they blow up like, well, well if they had their systems like going maybe but whatever so yeah so then there's like a scene of her like training fighting and it's like in slow-mo and I'm like at first she does one person and she uppercuts the dude and knocks him like there's no way okay it's a simulation oh okay that makes it a little better I am sick and tired of 110 pound women Hitting guys and them go flying away when they're just human. These are human. They're not aliens. Yeah. They're not Vulcans. They're not. They don't have super strength. They don't. See, have I don't ability. mind when it makes sense, but when a little lady, uh, yeah, I can understand her doing maybe pressure points or learning, you know, the Vulcan punch, pinch and all that. Okay, that's a way for her to get around like physical combat. But for her to like hit the guy and he goes flying away, literally uppercut him like a haymaker. That, that, that wouldn't happen. Boy, he flies away. But it was just a simulation, so whatever. And um, yeah, so she just hung. Oh, I have a very my very best good friend book. And she finally gets that communication from the uh, Discovery, and that leads us into everything that happened in the last episode. So now we're all caught up. She gets onto the bridge, and like everyone's happy to see her. It's weird because to the people on the Discovery, it's been hours. Yeah, I mean, I understand. Burn's been a year. It makes sense. Yeah, so she's going to be a little more emotional. emotional. Why would they care? I understand Tilly because Tilly's Tilly. But everyone else is just like, oh. and not a lot of touching and like you're a Starfleet officer. Stop the. T- it's weird, like. Oh. And I like the fact that during all the hugging and everything, she sees Giorgio in the corner. She kind of gives her like this nasty look, like what the f, Giorgio? Giorgio, you wanted to find her. Now you're just like, what? Well, I don't know what your deal is. I don't know what's going on in her hand. They were all hugging on the uh, the transporter pad. I thought Giorgio was gonna have to shut them all off the ship. Take the discovery and take off. I know, right? He's all like standing on the pad. Like, what are they doing? You know, Georgia's about the panel. She's looking at it like this. She's got to transport him off. So now we got Suru and Michael are walking through the halls and it's like, 
you know, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm th- this year for you, I can't imagine how bad it's been for you. And she's like, oh, you could, you wouldn't know the half of it. It's almost like, what did Michael do during this year? I wonder if we're going to find like, out. Cause it's like just... straight up, like, I, to make out of the only comparison, it was like Vietnam. Yeah. Was she like killing kids and stuff? And having to... Was there a situation like maybe like they got shields on the thing and she had to destroy a ship and she didn't want to? Is something like that? Was it, is she killing us in lies? And what did she do? Because she starts to get like this faces where it's like, yeah. I've, I've done... I've done some shit. I've like, done you some know? things you don't want to know. <laughs> she has that, that, that Rambo thousand miles stare. I've yeah. done some stuff, man. Almost, almost, almost. It's that bad. But uh, well, they're starting to, you know, they're getting all the systems up and everything. And um, they keep showing all these characters. And I, I got for the life of me, like this blonde girl. I know she's I a don't lieutenant remember, in I engineering, don't, but I don't know who she is. But the, I don't, these other people, I remember the girl with the eyeball thing, the, the lady on comms. I, I remember their faces. I don't remember yeah. this blonde lady. And it's so weird. The lady, remember she had all these problems in the episode? None of that in this episode. She did kind of disobey a little bit, remember? But we're gonna... talking like being out of it. Like she's like, I think she, I think she's afraid. Maybe because that's Because she did show is. fear. Remember, it was a super good when we get to it, we'll talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. it. But, but yeah, but now she's not like, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. So they're, they're basically, she explains all that to them and they're still trying to figure out how did all this all happen at once. And then even uh, Stamets is like, that's impossible. Like how could all the dilithium all go off all at the same time. Like, he's like, that did, because he's an astrophysicist, super smart guy, and he can't even fathom an idea of that. Because right, at this point, you're thinking, at this point, the Federation went through the whole galaxy. So how did the whole galaxy get this? It doesn't make any sense. Unless, I, I couldn't imagine, like, Q doing something like this, or... But why would he? That's not It'd have to be some quantum, fi- uh, you know, entity that's beyond... That did this. Because remember, there was always that storyline about all the different warping was messing up the space-time continuum. Huh. Maybe there's some type of entity that's above, and is you know we got to get rid of these people using these warps, and and could be could something like that. Because I can't imagine it just oh it was a natural disaster. Couldn't be. Well, oh, new green deal. But funny, why would it happen all over the galaxy? That doesn't make any sense. And then as she explaining it, um, we get the then then you get like Giorgio being like, <laughs> come from a guy who uses mushrooms to travel the universe. Shut up, Giorgio. No one wants your opinion. No one asks for it. No one ever wants to talk to you. Yeah. You're just a freaking dillweed. I hate her so much. We get um, but then they're like, okay, let's let's go to Earth, because uh, Michael got a message from some admiral saying anyone who got this message this is like 15, 12 years ago. Yeah. So like, hopefully this dude's still alive. Then uh, Stam is like, okay, I can get ready. But then he's like, who's the captain? Like, because he's talking to Stam, he's yeah. talking to Michael. He's like, then Sue is like, Michael, we need to go discuss something. And she's like, no, 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 Sue, this is you're the captain. This is a good moment. You have taken care of this crew. You have you are more of a captain than you have every quality, every facet, everything about you as an officer. You deserve this. You're chair. the most noble person I know. That's what I told him. Yeah, and then you know, and he takes the command, and that's awesome because Suru is an awesome character. I love him. Burnham did that because she's right, and probably secondly, the crap she did. This yeah, year. because she talks about like, you know, like I did. It goes, it doesn't feel right for me. Maybe it never will. Yeah. That's not me. But being a captain is you, Suru. You are a captain. And I, I love that because he's... I wish he was in a different Trek show. I know, right? He's so cool. What would DS9 stat? I would love that. <laughs> but then, you know, he, he, you know, takes the command and he gives a little speech about, like, you know, we're called the Discovery and the name more befitting than any other time to Aren't, discover. He always says the most inspirational I things. Him. I love him. Like, D, I want more of this. I love Zero. Oh, he's so cool. He's one. Of, he's a cool character. He, he's in a, out of like all Trek things, he's he's top 15, top 10 that characters. That tells you how good he is. In a show like this. Yes, that's amazing. So like, you know, everyone kind of gets that like, I thought someone was going to be like, I object. But uh, he takes the chair and, you know, starts giving out orders and, and not as, you know, uh, standing commander, but as captain. Super. Yeah, and everyone's like, I captain. I yeah. love that at the same time. Good dude, I love it. And Good. Giorgio, don't say anything. Shut up. Look how he's sitting there. He looks so cool. <laughs> I love it. Um, that was a 10 minute cold opener. Well, that was a pretty long one. That was a long cold opener. Then we get this. Then it becomes Star Trek Discovery brought to you by Lifetime. Oh, yeah. It's so... And, then, uh, and they show the robots repairing the ship. I just don't like it. I don't want to see it. I don't see robots. What, you, what they would do, they wear their, they would wear their VEV suits and go out there and fix it. That's or they would do. be like, they show like things that look like there might be someone in the ship. The That's a little arms. better, but then they have the little robots. I don't want to see yeah, that. Yeah, I, I don't want to see R2-D2 flying around on its track. I don't want to effing see that. Not, not from a Federation ship. Never. Um, no. And it may be some other alien race. Yeah. But yeah, you see like the little like pubie bots going around. Whatever. Then I thought this is like nice and it's also kind of sad. She's putting all the badges of all the people who've died, and they're like on a wall, which is. We remember a ship of like three hundred some, only like ninety survived. 
So they lost a lot of people. And it's Tilly doing this, and she's kind of sad, and then Michael walks up to her, and they're having this like talk back and forth. And like I said, it becomes a Lifetime channel. Yeah. The first thing you're talking about was okay, because she's talking about, you know, my family. Like, yeah, I, I'm just thinking about it. I know it hasn't been long for us, but what, what, my family, my mother, my cousins, that they've been dead for centuries. For centuries. You know, they had lives, they had kids, they did things, and I'll never know. Yeah, they woke up, they, they had breakfast that day, and then when the burn happened, where, where were they? Where were, like, what happened? Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. And that is a lot to think about, but at the same time, you kind of have to let it go. You're a Starfleet officer. She, she just, and then this is all good. And then she's talking about Michael, you know, I always knew you were out there. Like, I knew where we are going to find you. And, you know, I like your hair and everything. Then it gets very, you know, like, all like women girly stuff. Then she says something that kind of, like, threw me so after they're being all kind of nice to each other and she talks about like letting go because you have to let go of those memories of like your mom and stuff because they've been even if they live perfect lives they're dead because they've been, been dead for 800 years <laughs> so letting go you let go of us didn't you michael that's only a year it wasn't like she it's been 15 years well first of all what did you want her to do she couldn't find you. She barely got her signal right then and there. Where'd you? I'm like, I would say, if I'm burned, I'm like, why did you say that? That was super mean, right? And best you come from Tilly. That was like, wow, You let us Tilly. go, didn't you? That was like accusatory. I know. <laughs> and then she laughs it off, but I'd be like, uh, no. What? I mean, bitch, what? I never gave up for a second. <sighs> she was, oh, that's what she was doing this whole year. Why do you think she did the thing she did? <sighs> I, I just thought that was so weird. That's such a weird interaction yeah. with you. And then she said something else I forgot too, Tilly. That was kind of mean. Like, wow, if I'm from Tilly, that was just like out of place. I don't know. It's just a, that was just a whole weird scene. There's a lot of those scenes where it's just two characters talking and it doesn't move the plot anywhere. It's just dumb. Um, they got Giorgio working the transporter. Which is not smart. So they bring Book over and Book's like, oh, hey. And then Giorgio, of course, is like Giorgio and she has to talk to everybody like this. I hate, I hate her, I hate her because she's just an evil person. She's going to screw over everybody. Yeah, she is. She's going to end up being the main villain like we said. Watch. Yeah. She might not work. She's too... Uh, Book's like, oh, you must be Felipe Giorgio. Uh, Michael warned me about you. <laughs> mm, maybe not enough. Like, she's just because she has to be who she is. Oh, and he's like, he's like, where's Michael? Oh, your little girlfriend. And then we get all that. She's not my girlfriend. What are you, chowder? <laughs> she's not my girlfriend. What, what, what's the deal? <laughs> I don't know. And then they have this banter. And the thing is, Giorgio's none of your business. Is what this so, he, so he basically goes, you know, we're not even having this conversation. Yeah. Because, like, he's getting all, like, flustered about it. We never I mean, we never did anything like that. Like, you know, like how you tell, like, a 13-year-old boy his first girlfriend and he's, like, all embarrassed. That's how it was Yeah, like. this is, like, a lifetime crap. I don't care about I don't care about this. I don't mean anything. <laughs> it's like Giorgio's know, always right? like that about everything. But... Uh, they see all the dilithium they and have. And he's like, and he's like, wow. You can you can roll sector a dozen sectors with this. Yeah. Because you basically guys have a treasure trove. But the funny thing is, they don't even really need it because they have oh. spore drive. Yeah. So like, Buck's like, do you want to get my hands on this? Then we get more witty banter. It never stops. No. So now it's Buck and Michael back and forth. If I had this with lithium, mm -hmm, I didn't know you'd just take it. I'm gonna do it, take care of myself. Mm -hmm. But they're like, he's like asking her, why don't you come with me? Then he says. They've been together a year. Yeah. Do you feel like you owe these people something? Yeah, I like Booker, but in this episode, I kind of started to like, wow, Booker, that was kind of mean. Why would you say that? She's Starfleet. She owes them everything. What are you talking about? I owe the Federation everything. Yeah. Because it's not about the me. It's not about the individual in Starfleet. Never That's the whole point of the trek. Yeah. God, and the freaking people don't seem to understand that. They're it's better not... than the sum of your parts. You yeah. are, everyone is an individual, but yet you have to all be for the greater good of everybody. For the Federation. Federation, yeah. For the United Federation of Planets. That's what we want to get to. You lose the individual and you become part of something bigger. Bigger than yourself. But but I guess he doesn't understand it because he was born into a world that was all about yeah. doing... But they just kind of keep having witty banter back and forth. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's just it so It goes funny. on and on. And We're talking about for two, three minutes. And this is Jonathan Franks. Yes. Franks, really? I'm hoping he didn't write this episode. Maybe, you know, just, we should have changed the script big time. You could have cut out like... About half these conversations, at least if not more, on this episode. So she, they try to set up to where, like, is she going to go with the book or is book going to stay? And it would make more for sense for him to stay than it would be for her to leave. Yeah. But we all know she's not going anywhere. She's the damn star of the show. Imagine these leave Discovery behind. It's just her and book going around. The they don't even, don't even follow the Discovery anymore. They get to the captain's thing, and I understand what Suru, because Suru was like, I wanted you to be Captain. You know, like, he's like, it's a little more extra praising of her, like a month. Well, the thing, much. Is, the thing is, we got that every episode before. We so haven't gotten it too much, but now, yeah, it's starting to get. I was going to offer you to be Captain. And then he's like, why did you, why did you refuse it? I need to know. You have to tell me. 
You're captain now. Let it go. Yeah, first of all, captain, you don't act like that as a captain. Yeah. Even in private, you don't do that. Even if you have that in your feeling, you keep that to yourself. But then she kind of just reiterates what we talked about, how like she's like, she must have done something. She didn't say what she's done, but she goes, I need time to reacclimate myself, basically, into Starfleet life because I had to live a life of basically like a like, rogue. Like a rogue mercenary, yeah. She had to live the Han Solo life. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm riding Solo. So, uh, Book docks his ship and sends his ship. And it looks like a Star Wars scene, it's, too. It's just like, yeah, when it goes to the thing. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't see stormtroopers running by. I know. You hear the, woo, woo, <laughs> that one sound. I like, they freaking. <laughs> it is what it is. They're I'm... all just running in place. <laughs> <laughs> Find me those plans. So he lands, he lands the. He goes sideways, like the whole, whatever. He lands his ship, and since his ship has like a cloak on it, they're going to put all the lithium on his ship and cloak it. So other ships can't detect that they're lifting, which is a good idea, but it's also dangerous because then Book could just leave with it. But, but here's also a problem, too. You could, uh, hey, by the way, you want to give us that cloaking device? We could use it because I'm sure there's no treaty there's anymore. No, there's none list. of this uh, uh, wanting to share technology that never happens. Yeah, why not? You're so far behind. You might as well. You have so they much. They could have easily said, you know what? Their system is so advanced, there's no way to adapt it. There you go. Without being like in an actual shipyard. Yeah, it could just be a minute dialogue. Not even that. Five seconds. seconds. If it could spend 50 seconds with where did he bound her, you can give us some uh, uh, science talk. No. Yeah. So that's a good idea, but also Sue was like, okay, it's going to be under guard, and Book's not allowed to enter his ship without my permission. Oh, of course. So because he could literally leave with all that lithium. So so they're going to go to Earth now. But um, Marco Burnham's like, okay... Since we got the sport drive, we can go, but we're going to go right outside Earth's sensors range just in case. Because you don't know what, what it's like. We have no clue what's going on with Earth. So they, they get ready to jump and, you know, they do the black alert, which we haven't seen in like forever. No. Uh, they do the, the flippy thing and then they end up in the outside of Saturn, which is pretty cool. I go, oh, Saturn looks good. <laughs> I like how it books like, whoa, what the hell was that? Yeah. He's like, I've never tra- tra- traversed so much space so quickly. He's like, my goodness, this is like the greatest. You didn't tell me it flipped around. <laughs> he didn't tell me about the spinny thing. And so they're they're outside of Saturn, and now they're within Earth visual range. And kind of a cool shot. We see Discovery come up, and there's Earth and everything. Like, oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. But then, you look, you don't see no Federation ships. You would usually see 100. You see nothing. Nothing. They get close to the surface, and they see, like, these, um, these like, shield arrays. And then it, it can shield the whole planet. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, dang. So they basically became Fortress Earth. Yeah. So shields go up. Uh, they start getting targeted by ships. Ships go up there. Okay, red alert. We don't know what's going on. So, like... They get hailed, they answer the hail, and then it's just some lady who doesn't sign in as Starfleet. Some Earth Defense Force. That's what they are now. Like what he's like, what happened to Starfleet? What's going he's on? He's like, um, I am Captain Suru, the USS Enterprise, and like we don't have anything of your records. Then he tries to play it off. No. We were on a deep space science mission. Uh it was basically secret. We got a, a message here from Earth, we're returning, and she's kinda not buying it. She's like, Well, what's going on? Like, uh, how could we not know about you? And You're they, not in our registry at yeah, all. Yeah, and but you know, we're we're secret. And they're like, oh, look at your old design. It's the thing. And he's like, oh, it's, it was an older ship, but it works. And we're, and we're, we're like a generational ship, yeah. as he was trying to say. And he's like, yeah, we are the descendants of the original people. So, okay, there you go. So, like, trying to explain why they would never know. But see, how did you get here? Like, there's no way. Like, he's like, what about your dilithium? Yeah. Oh, we weren't in warp when it happened. Yeah. So, like, they knew. That's they what I was kind of saying. So, was that a thing? <laughs> so, they're like, okay, we can talk or whatever. You need to submit yourself to a, a inspection. an inspection. He's like, okay, we can talk about this. No, we're, we're bleeding on your ship now. So they were able to go through their shields. Like nothing. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, guys. Got to get some upgrades, man. This is bad. So they start transporting onto their ship, and it's very um, aggressive. Yeah, very aggressive. It's very... They uh, have their phasers already ready to go. You're like... And their uniforms are lame. They're all stupido. The I don't thing, like the thing, the thing is, the fact they have the Earth symbol, I mean, that's okay, but the rest of it just looks bland. There's nothing spectacular. They should just have the straps and nothing else. <laughs> uh, yeah, they all. It's all. You know, like this. So they have like all these weird strappy things, and then we get our our new girl. Oh, she's geez. gonna be. The, she's she, she. I got hardcore Wesley vibes from her. Yeah. Cause she's only sixteen. But I don't mind. I didn't mind Wesley, but I don't like her because Wesley was curious. This one is. She's just. My so goodness. Michael runs off the bridge, and we, of course we get some more eye candy for the ladies. Look how buff this guy is. Man. This that's guy's like, got some like, okay, we're getting bored. Okay, let's get it on. <laughs> no, he's, no, he's like, in my script, I got to be shirtless at least four times in this series because I didn't get these muscles not to show him off. Yeah. You don't buy a Corvette and leave it in the garage, baby. I got <laughs> to show, show the gun show for everyone. He's a, the Federation may not have advanced technology, but they didn't got guns like these. So she's going to get him in a uniform because if they find someone out of uniform, they're going to be well, suspicious. Yeah, because obviously they can't have any mercy. So they start undressing in front of each other. Michael, of course, Michael doesn't. She gets her top off and then it just kind of just, she has like her undershirt on or whatever, but it's like, 
What what's the deal? Like what's this weird sexual tension he keeps? Oh, it's so weird. Oh, you just want to. This is your long con to get me inside this uniform. Oh, you do look pretty good. And he just goes back and forth. Again, point. more dumb banner. More banter, 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 banter. Oh, it's so itchy. I hate this thing. Oh, it's gonna. Learn. But she like goes up to him, like zips it up. It's so. What with the zip? It's like you feel like the way he's going. She's going the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> this zip comes right back down. Oh no! And she goes to the pants. What are you doing? <laughs> but like, look at her. Look how she's standing so close to him, putting his badge on yeah. and everything. It's like some maybe something almost did happen and they didn't or something. I don't know. I'm, we're gonna get the backstory. Remember on this 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 planet, you you saved me. Actually, I'm the one who saved you. But remember that one time with this alien race? We, we don't know what you're talking about. We have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. Stop talking about it. We don't care. Um, we get to uh, then we get Giorgio and Michael get some alone time, and of course it's just Giorgio being things. Hmm. Uh, this in this conversation. Oh, Michael, you had a taste of freedom, and now you're back here. I don't think you were, you didn't know what you wanted out of life without someone telling you what to do, but now you had that taste of being the freedom for that one year, and you don't even want to be here. It's like, Giorgio. Why, why do you know what she wants? Uh, Giorgio, just stop already. Like, you're just... And she had to put her uniform on, too, because they can't have anyone out of uniform. They made her admiral. Yeah. She, of course, she had to make herself, like, the biggest and baddest. Of no, it never comes into play. No. I thought it was going to be something... Well, I think she just did it, because, because but to these people, they don't care about all that. On Earth, so that doesn't mean anything. Might as well just be <laughs> some uniform from an alien race. But yeah, but even Michael keeps having this look of like, maybe she's right. Kind of. That's not, sorry, the Federation is the opposite of like, I want freedom. It's for the betterment of the human race and for all races and all species that are part of the Federation to expand our knowledge and it, that's what it's I, about. I'd rather be I'd rather be Burnham with part of this part of this discovery so we can try to rebuild the Federation again instead of going with Giorgio and being on the top of a pile of skulls. That's what she wants. A pile of bones. That that what Sending is that? A throne, a throne of dead bodies yeah. and blood and Who guts. Who cares? That that's not that's not good. That's not a good thing. Whatever. I hate I hate Giorgio. Then we uh we get to. The negotiations, it's Captain Sue who's talking to this other Captain Lady, and then he's like, we're, you know, this her Federation thing was going on, then she kind of is like, you've been gone a long time, haven't you? She's like, well, we got this message from a Admiral whatever, and she's like, oh, he died like 12 years ago, the Federation doesn't have a base here anymore. Yeah. We're just a united yeah, Earth. Earth, and they go, they left, they left because they were afraid we were vulnerable after the thing, so they went somewhere, we don't know where they went, so they don't even know where they went. So Earth is just its own thing. Yeah. It's not part of the Federation anymore. And, he, and then and he, and he sewer just can't comprehend. You're not part of the Federation anymore. That's crazy. You're the home planet. And he's like, a lot of our crew members, this is their ancestral home. A lot of them came from Earth. So it's like, now we're not part of Earth anymore? That's just like a... It's know, insane. It's crazy to think that. It's sad that people they met out there in the galaxy have more fondness for the Federation than actually people on Earth. That's crazy. It, it is what it is. Yeah. They look up that, that dude and they find out that he died a while ago and they're like, oh, geez, what the... She's like, whatever you're looking for is not here. Just get the hell out, away from Earth. You can, Whatever mission you're on, take it somewhere else because we're not interested. Yeah. So it's like, damn, Earth is not a safe haven. And then she said, there's this one guy who's been after us. Yeah, there's some uh, other guy who's been doing like raids on us. Well, some other alien or whatever been attacking us, so... And I like how Sue was like, well, we would not... We're not part of that. We're here to... We're here. We're part of Earth. We have nothing to do with any of those raiders because they're looking... Everyone's looking for dilithium. We get to the um, where Stamets is and everything, where they're, they're doing their inspection, and they're being very evasive. It's going to touch anything, and Stamets is like, this is sensitive equipment. I don't need to be screwing with all this stuff. And then we got that one girl, and she's like, just poking around and touching things. And, and just being mean. Uh, they're all just, they're just crude. Yeah. They're just like, <laughs> but that's how they are. That's how Earth is now. Yeah. Bunch of jerks. <laughs> we, what do we, again, what was the uh, the beginning of Back to Future 2? What do we become a bunch of assholes? Yeah, that's exactly yeah, what Yeah, no, happened. exactly. <laughs> Stamets like, you're all like, like Isaac. Like, wow, it's all Federation. <laughs> like, the whole so Earth it was, the, the, All Earth became season one Stamets. Yeah. But of course, that one girl's like digging around and touching things and asking all these questions. And then like, Tilly doesn't like her. Tilly's like, well, we're all smart. We all know these things. And I'm like, it's just weird. It's weird. Weird dialogue. And then she goes, oh, this is like an antique ship, you know, like a museum. So what? Well, museums are cool. So what do you? Who cares? Yeah, just this weird. Is yeah. this comedy? I don't know. Is it? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> I'm trying. I don't know. It's not funny. I'm not laughing. But she's starting to like figure things out. Like, oh, this uh, this glass cube. There's an interface here. Like, she's starting to figure out like this is like stuff. And of course, they're just like telling her, please get that out of here. Stop touching things. And they're starting to figure out. Okay, this girl's crazy smart. But she looks like a little kid. Yeah, you're like 16. Yeah, it's super weird how crazy young she is. And then the other person says, stop talking to him. We're just here to look. You're to inspect, not to yeah, discuss with him. Which makes sense. Um, we get back to the bridge and those bad guys are showing those up. Those raiders, yeah. So the raiders are showing up and then that captain's like, uh, don't hail them. He's like, 
You have no command here. You're not Starfleet. Don't tell me. Yeah, what to exactly. Do. You have to listen to you. So he gets the hail, and then they have like um like bug helmets. They look like the uh, man is from uh, DC. Yeah, the helmets. Yeah, the, the yeah Black Mantis guy. Yeah, yeah they yeah. totally do look like that dude. <laughs> yeah. So they're but it's like no, we're Starfleet. We're gonna do things our way. We're gonna talk to these people. Um, then. There's people still in the mess hall? Yeah, they're, they're being attacked. Alert. Red alert. Get everyone to your stations. What are you... I got to clock in in about 15 minutes. Man, it makes sense that Booker's not doing anything, but everyone else should be out of the mess hall. This... Michael runs with the Booker. I got a plan. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's, like, it's yeah. so weird. Yeah, remember that one time we did this thing? I mean, yeah, it's such a... That one time on this planet, that's every single time. And then it clips that goes a family guy. <laughs> I remember that you think that's bad. So Michael has a plan. We don't know what the plan. We don't know anything. Then, you remember the praising of Michael? The praising of this girl is ridiculous. Oh, this scene is probably the worst scene in the episode. So, when she was uh, examining their stuff, she put like a blocker so they can't transport off. So, that captain lady and all them are stuck on the uh, Enterprise, stuck on the Discovery. So, like, they get into a battle, they're risking their own lives yeah. too. And I guess it's blocking the transport. And then the other the lady was like, Well, you guys sabotage it. And they're like, We're freaking Starfleet. We, we would never do, do that. I mean, I'm, I want to say, you know you have records of Starfleet, right? You know we would never do this. And it's like pissing sewer off. Yeah, because it's ridiculous. But like, oh, wow. This girl did it while we're all watching. She did it under our noses. Man, she, I was smart, but this girl's super smart. She's like crazy, mega, ultra, mega, super duper, uber smart. It's over like burden. The praising of this girl is ridiculous. Man, when I was in uh, the academy, I thought I was pretty smart, but this girl's even smarter than my smartness. Oh, you act like she'd have 900 years on you guys. That's why she seems so smart to you. Why? <laughs> so they're just praising the hell of the hell out of this little girl for oh, like yeah. 15 minutes. It's ridiculous. Um, those uh, those bad guys are they? They, they want they want the lithium. So, and of course, because they go, go ahead and scan our ship. We, we don't, we don't have any. And it's because it's all on book ship and it's been cloaked so they can't see it. So technically they don't. Oh, you ended up in our system pretty quickly. So you must have, you must have. There's to no them. way because you just came out of nowhere. But didn't they have like slip drive or whatever? Was it, was that not well, that, a thing that's anymore? Well, that's Booker's shop, ship. But, but, but wasn't that like, a, so if it's on a stupid little runabout like his, his little ship, wouldn't it be on lots of other ships? <sighs> well, maybe Earth did. Does it still use the lithium though? Cause, because why would he need it though? You still use smaller amounts, but you could tell Earth has become Earth defense, so they probably didn't even think about making ships and stuff. They're not even thinking that. So then they get an unauthorized ship exit, and it's Booker's ship with all the lithium on it. And Sue was like, "What the?" F- and at this point, this lady from Earth didn't know they had the lithium, so you're hiding things from me. Yeah. It's like, oh well. And, uh, and then, but remember, Sue told her he's not allowed to leave without telling me. No. Why did they tell him? Exactly. Tell him the plan. What is it hard? Uh, Sir, I need to speak to you in private. You know that real quick. And then, okay, we're going to do a plan. Then he comes back out. That's We don't have to even know the plan. As long as Sue got the plan. No, they couldn't even do that. So they're going to go do their own thing. You go out there. And you contact those aliens. And they do a lot of, let's do the Tramvision Tango. Oh, that's a pretty good one. But let's do the, the Translision uh, Two-Step. Oh, How about the Tango and Cash move? <laughs> yeah, let's do the... Let's do the, 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 the <laughs> the Mambo number five. They just keep saying all these things. I don't know what they are. Or let's do the Koryashi Maru. No, not that. <laughs> Anything. Anything. <laughs> so they keep like naming all these things that we don't know what they See, are. See, we don't. It, it doesn't mean nothing to us. And it's, it's not like, interesting. And 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 books getting a little too excited. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. But everyone can die. Yeah, Why this are you is having funny. fun? Why are you having funsies? They contact them and then they basically tell them that uh, so they're going to do some type of diversion plan. We don't we don't know what's going on. And then books like how can you even trust Suru? He's like he's Starfleet. He'll 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 do the right thing. I'm thinking what's the right thing? What but we, we could have just told them. You don't have to worry about it. They're surrounded. Then that lady tells her Earth Defense Force, "We're gonna blow that. We're gonna that shit that left you thing. We're gonna blow it up. We can't let that lithium go in the hands of because these raiders. Because these raiders get that lithium, they're gonna rule this whole system. We can't let that happen. And Suru's like, you're not gonna fire upon our ship." And then George was like, hmm, looks like you got the choice, Captain. He's like, I'm not going to fire on Earth ships. Even if they're not part of the Federation, I'm not going to fire on yeah, Earth. Yeah, like I said, George, we're not you. We're not going to start on the situation. And Suru makes the captain's things like, full shields, we'll take the brunt of the attack. And what? they're like, whoa. Although, well, this is like 900 years of technology. You sure you want to do that? They could rip right through our shields. We don't know what's going to happen. And the lady goes, we're at full power. Yeah, we have full Ooh. shields. But that other lady that had the thing, she's like, you, why, do we, why are this you is doing She it? acts a little. And she's not like, those was like, I'm Captain. I told you what to do. Then he's like, get in position to block it. Then she like, doesn't do it. Then he's like, get on it. And then she finally does it. So there's some PTSD going on here. She's afraid. There's something, there's something up with her. But she does do it. They get in the way. 
Two hits, one hit. Just two, just two torpedoes. Knocked out all their shields and like blew a freaking almost blew oh, a throw the whole the bridge. <laughs> Jeez, guys. So three, three would have killed oh, them. Oh, would have killed them. They go, our shields are gone. We can't take another hit. We're done. But Suru is like, no, we're going to stand in the way because that's what the Federation, we're going to defend our ship. And even if it kills us, we're going to do it. Get back to uh, Book and Michael. They um they start the negotiation. Oh, we have the the, the lithium. You can take it, just leave. Yeah, they say. So you see what they did? Those torpedoes will wipe you out. You guys, you gotta just. We'll give you the lithium, but your people have to go, and you have to stay, and we'll give you the lithium. Well, why are you gonna do that? No one does anything for free. And they're like, well, we just want to uh basically just want peace here. Then Book puts it on pause. Like, ooh, I like the way you do that. Why is that? It's like a weird sex see, see, did did they they have no one maybe no maybe his species can go heal things maybe they have like a mind thing or something and that's like their version of sex i don't know maybe some weird kind of it's just weird that there's all this into window and they never did anything that's, that's for a, a year no i doubt a guys, year I, I call, I'm calling BS, in close guys. proximity just the two of them for a year especially when you're in that lifestyle kind of being a gallivanter yeah that fits that kind of life it's like no i call bs so it's like drop your shields and we can transport over your transport over the the stuff to you I guess he traps his shells. We don't see what happens. Next thing we know, Buck and Michael are on the uh, on the Discovery with him. They captured him. Yeah. How? What happened? They I went onto know. a ship, grabbed him, and transported out. Or did they just transported him? But well, we don't have some type of defense against that. Well, they say you had to take his shields down. Yeah, but couldn't you do that anytime anymore? Just transport someone's captain off the yeah. ship. And then another thing too, don't they have self transporters? Why don't you just transport them right back to the thing? They don't explain what happened. So they say, oh, since he does, we'll have emitters on, so he can't use his self transport. Yeah. See, you just... why don't they when they transport and he opens the thing and they lift and they jump yeah. out and they grab him? Remember how good the last episode was at explaining everything? They didn't. They forgot to do that again. We're going back to not explaining things anymore. So they brought him onto the ship, and they're like, they won't attack as long as we have their captain. So everyone's safe. So for but for the moment, everyone's safe. No one's attacking each other anymore. Um, they go and they start negotiating, which is something th- that the Federation would do. And then he goes, I have nothing to talk to him. And they go, no, you're going to negotiate. This He's is- like, oh, they're, they're, they're raiders, they're savages. And then said, of course, because they don't understand each other. He's like, when's the last time you guys even had any dialogue whatsoever? I guess it's been years, over what did it say? Over a decade, they didn't yeah. even talk to each other? Yeah, it's ridiculous. So it's all just been conflict. It's like, no, we're going to talk. And, oh, they, they don't even use it to lithium. They just hold it, hoard it all to themselves. And, Unearth, yeah. well, we have to defend ourselves. We can't let people in. So they both have points. But this is, uh, they're moving forward baby steps. Then, of course, Giorgio, like, kicks him to his knees and rips his helmet off. Oh, diplomacy takes so long. You're welcome. All Giorgio all you had to say is, can you take your helmet off? So we can see who you are. And he's just a human. Yeah. So human. so they're all human. They're all from Earth. Yeah. But it's been so long they forgotten. It's not. That's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. But it's well, it's been 150 years, I can imagine. So we see this guy and he looks pretty gaunt. He looks like they've been some through some Dude, stuff, yeah. so maybe they're waiting to, to, to survive. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> this part. The music the, is, is do, 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 do. I thought Willy Wonka was gonna pop yeah. out. It's like silly Billy. Ha, ha, ha. I should have been like da 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 da. Tell me what is this? I know what you're doing up there. And she's like, Oh no, I've been found out. He's like, Get down here. I know what you did. I know you set up that sabotage thing. Let's talk. And I guess she just wanted to study their vessel because it's such an old design and everything. And she's like super curious about it. And the Stamets is talking to her and letting her know there's like you all these things. This uh this uh, propulsion drive you have. How does it work? What are these spores? What's all this for? So he starts explaining it to her and he's like. You know, this is the, the mycelial network, all that stuff. He explains how the spore drive works. He uses a long name, but no one uses that name. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the the spore drive something, 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 something. Because then she's like, oh, wow, that, that that's amazing. And he's like, you remember that interface I was talking about? He's like, I'm the interface. Yeah. She I, goes, there's more of you? Is there more of you like that? And he, like, she goes, nope, sorry. Goes, I, I'm, I'm unique like this. Well, I guess I can understand that. I guess she's like a super smart prodigy. We do find out later on why she's so smart. Then he talks to her, and she's only 16 years old. Wow, okay. Okay, no. she teeth. Why does everyone have to have messed up teeth? She kind of right? has gappy teeth. Oh my, no, not as bad as the Romulan and Picard. Oh no. my goodness. <laughs> Ooh, that boy got the British teeth going. So they keep talking and talking about all the different things. And she's like, oh, you know, she's like, why did you do it? Well, I wanted more time on the ship. But she didn't know this whole being attacked by the other people was going to no. happen. She just wanted to make an excuse to stay on the ship longer so she can study more. Okay, whatever. She could have just asked, but I guess in this time you don't ask anymore. Well, but the thing is, the thing is, also remember they're not Starfleet, so they have they just do things differently. He he spills the beans and tells them from the past. He just yeah, tells her. She tells her, which is kind of weird. I don't know, but she's like, oh, because well, she didn't tell you. She the thing is, she didn't tell you anything. So why would you trust her? You know, like he asked her, "What about you?" And she doesn't really say anything. So, but she does say, "I know where you can find that guy who uh, made that message." Yeah. 
Yeah. And he's like, he's still alive. She's like, oh yeah, kinda. I'm like, okay, what the hell is he an AI or something? Or I, I that's what I was thinking. He's a cyborg or android, I should say. Yeah, or like he's a computer or computer, something. Yeah. So we get back to the negotiations and we find out that these people were from Titan. Yeah. And even that lady's like, Titan. And he's like, yeah. And she's like, but you guys are self sufficient. He's like, yeah, until about 10 years ago and one of their hydrogen things blew up. And remember, it, they weren't getting any maintenance from Earth or nothing, so eventually things are going to start going sideways. They took out a lot of their environmental stuff and they, they've they been starving. And they, the thing is, they're overpopulated because they all had to go in smaller, bigger, smaller areas, so they expanded. And, and then the most effed up thing ever, and he's like, we had no communication, so we sent the ship to Earth and they were destroyed on contact. We didn't even let us have a chance to talk. It's like, well, we had to defend ourselves and we didn't know what was happening. But really, guns ablazing is the first thing you do. That's not... Good. But then, you know, even she understands we're all human here. Yeah. Then Sue was like, well, I, I'm assuming you still have your research, right? Maybe you guys can share research. She can send some engineers and you guys can start a trade thing. And because we're all human, we can start rebuilding and we can work together. Yeah, and not only that, they also, she, what she, I would have said, maybe you can even have those people that crowd in time and they can come back to Earth now. So you don't won't be so crowded. Because there should be plenty of room on Earth. Yeah, Exactly. Because, again, every space on Earth is terraformed and lovable. Oh, yeah. And it's so funny because if you're sure you're thinking, all my years, I never thought I'd be negotiating Earth, Earth, with, Earth. with Titan. <laughs> with Titan before. What the heck? Negotiating Earthlings with Earthlings. Earthlings, yeah. That's hilarious. But they do the, the Starfleet thing and they do it through through diplomacy. Yes. Which I absolutely love. This, I love this, that. This part is so amazing. I want more of this. Then, um, she's like... The way you've handled that, that was that was amazing. Because they haven't seen someone wanting to talk things out in probably their whole entire, whole entire life. No. So that's pretty cool. Then they talk to that one, to this uh, this lady, and they say she. So I'm like, okay, I can use she. They said it in the show. Maybe maybe it was some idiot who wrote that said that. I'm thinking because um, that we find out later what she is, and then, then that explains, oh, I'm binary. So there's like, oh, thank you very much for you know this information and everything. And then... She transports off there. She stays behind, and Sue goes, "Oh, Stamets uh, was telling me about you. How you're very intelligent, and you're smart, and you're able to like do all this stuff, and you're able to find this admiral we're looking for." She's like, "Yeah, because that's me." And they're like, "What? What do you mean?" And then we find out that she's Trill. Well, she's actually human, but yeah, she has, has a trill. symbiote in her. Yeah, yeah. So she has that. So I'm like, oh, that's why. So was that admiral was the previous host, and then went into her. Yeah. But so what's she her has, last name? That's all in her last name. Might be funny if it was Dax. It's Dax. Ah! That'd be hilarious. That'd be the most beautiful thing ever. That'd be cool. So now she has uh, basically anyone who doesn't know how the whole Trill symbiote thing works, they go from host to host. But the the newest host can access every memory from the previous and, host. And, and and these symbiotes can live for like thousands of years, so they can live a long. So time. this symbiote has knowledge of the burn. Yeah. Or they think it does. At least has the knowledge of this Emerald guy. And knowledge before that. Yeah, so if she can act, but she's having trouble accessing it, she's a human. So she can't get all the memories. So maybe she's the key to finding out exactly what happened. And this is kind of cool because uh, Sue and Burn didn't know about this because in their time, they didn't know there was a secret because no one, the children didn't want to know they had this symbiote in them. So yeah. they're getting caught up to that. that see, that's cool. That Wasn't Jadzia cool. so cool? Yeah, she was. <laughs> she was cool. I loved her. She was so awesome. Yeah. So, they, so that's our next key. And... Then we have this, um, I, I do like this little moment because it goes back to season one where he's talking because when they're, he's explaining all this to Michael and he's like putting that telescope back together. Remember the one she got from Giorgio? And yeah, the good, she got good Giorgio the captain. And they're putting it all together and he's pointing out the window. He's like, well, we're here on Earth. They, they're they going to let us go down to Earth if you want to, you can. She's like, oh no, I can look from here because everyone else went down to like go visit. Yeah, for like a little bit. Because there's Starfleet Academy. It's not Starfleet anymore, but there it is. It's out the window. Yeah. Then uh, Book's going to say his goodbyes. And, um, I you thought, know he's going to be back. There's no way he's not back. Yeah. Wouldn't it be crazy if we never see him again? I know. <laughs> so they're kind of saying their weird goodbyes again. And you know he's almost like, hey, why don't you come with me? And she's like, oh, why don't you stay here with me? Oh, But he does say something I thought was nice. Like, I'm happy you have a family here. Yeah. Because having a family is something that's like a rarity. Yeah, and he goes, I can't, I can't wear the uniform. It makes me itch. Yeah, like, rash, again, stupid. the more banter. Yeah, I know. So he takes his ship and he gets his, uh, he takes his, remember when Han Solo took his, his reward money yeah. and then ran off with it? It's the same situation. He's got something like the last some years now. So oh yeah. He's going to, he's going to be good. She's like, now you can, you can run this system. This now. is a whole, this is a whole quadrant now. Alpha Quadrant, you've never been here. So now it's a whole new. It's like, now you got a clean slate and everything. I guess I don't owe you anything. Now it's yeah. like, oh, oh, I paid you back. Yeah. So that's nice. Uh, get back to the bridge and. You know, they're talking about Earth and, well, we have to go find the Connected Federation. We get down to the planet and there's that big tree that's in there. That, that, I wonder if it's the one Picard uh, brought up his love on there. Then, um, oh, the tree. So I used to study under this tree. I don't know any of these people. 
<laughs> That's the thing. If this was Jordy and, you know, the, the people I cared about and I knew about and it just doesn't well, that work. It would have been cool, like, if they're doing all of a sudden, like, a descendant of Boothby comes up because he's the gardener for Starfleet. And well, he's, like, fun. the descendant of him. Well, that that would bring just a fun little callback. So they're all sitting under the tree having fun and, like, just talking about the old times. They get a call. And then um, Taylor's like, well, can I have five more minutes? And then Sue was like, we have a lot of work to do, but you can have your five minutes. And then the camera zooms out and it looks like absolute garbage. Oh, the tree looked okay up close, but far it looks bad. It looks so bad. It's fake. But the super zoom out looks just like Starfleet. It's you, get the, you, get would, the, you would not know this is not Starfleet headquarters. You see the Golden Gate Bridge. You see all this stuff. You even see yeah. like a boat in the water and boom. And that so Earth is still doing well itself. It's it just, just became Fortress Earth. Yeah, which is not good. What do you think about Klingons and Cardassians? And what, well, what, the Thirsts the, probably blew up too. They're probably stuck too. I wonder if they're going to go visit them. That would be fun. That, that's weird. I don't know. We haven't seen... Because all we, we haven't seen Romulans, no. Vulcans, Klingons... What happened? So this all we saw was Andorians. That's it. See, at this point, I mean, like even like um, like you have like the founder homeworld. Wouldn't this be a perfect time to come in and sweep up? Yeah, but for them, maybe. Oh, maybe, maybe the thing is, maybe their ship's got it too. Maybe they can't. Maybe they're stuck too. Wow, oh, the Borg, Jemadar. Oh my goodness, Borg, Jemadar. What about them? The Borg doesn't use the lithium. Mm, that's interesting. See, there's so much, so many questions. Well, but maybe, maybe that might get answered in Picard because there's that that, 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 that connection between connection. Them. But overall, for a Jonathan Franks episode, it's an F. So disappointing. It's an F for Jonathan Franks. For a Discovery episode, it's a four or five. It's a four. It's a four out of ten. Yeah. I don't know. Franks, you cut out the banner too much. Way yeah, too, too much, much witty banner yeah. between characters we don't care about. But it's so funny. Like, I can remember earlier in the episode when Sue was talking about, oh yeah, my people know fear, so I'm I'm used to this. But everyone else is kind of like on edge, but I, to me, I kind of lived my whole life with this yeah. kind of but the unknown. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I like Sue. He's so cool. Yeah, he is. And I do like the fact when he's sitting there, he's telling me, no, we're going to take the brunt of this attack. Well, we won't survive. We're taking the brunt of this attack. Thanks, the... thanks for the opinion, but I'm telling you what but, I'm going to do. But I love the fact that she didn't say any back talk, like any condescending He stuff. had to cut her off, but then she's like, okay, I'm... I'm yeah, I'm... I'm the captain. Just do what I say. Stow that belly aching yeah. and just get back to oh, work. Oh, by the way, Earth, I know you're not Federation, but can you help us and give us some shielding, please? Do your torpedoes almost wiped us out. Give, yeah, just give us some of your torpedoes. I'm sure we can retrofit them yeah. to our, the, the base. They have the, even, even that tiny net transphasic torpedo, so can you imagine what Earth has? So I, that's another thing they didn't talk about, which I'm sure they're not going to address at all. But um, yeah, overall, for a third episode, this is pretty lame. It's a big step backwards for me. But at least for now, they're going to try to find Starfleet. And I think the key is going to be this trail girl. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The they got to they got to they got to figure it out. Like what you have what you have the knowledge in your head, we just need to get it out. So, yeah, then there's the preview for the next episode, but it's all a bunch of random stuff. So, we have literally no way. That's weird. And, they, and Chris made a good point. I want to give them something. Like, why? They're not part of the Federation anymore, so you wouldn't give them any technology. That's yeah. So weird. Even though they're human, that's just it's so, so crazy. weird. The humans not being connected. Ah, that's odd. Uh, that's but again, but again, is it? But again, is this whole fortress thing a thing of all about the wall? Is that? Kinda, yeah, it's, it's just a comment on. I don't want to think that, but I think I'm thinking it's part of that. Yeah, but um, yeah. Now we 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 got busy weeks now. We got Mandalorian. We got this. Oh, so we have a lot of stuff, and we gotta wait until we can get a native to come. Yeah, because we want to do Mandalorian all together. So yeah. we'll probably do that. Sunday, then this will be up first, then Mandalorian, and then we'll probably catch up oh, and get it back to back. Be so hectic. But um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, says us a little bit of a back step into the side. Yeah, you know what's so funny? Who would have thought this episode would be worse than last one, and there's no Jet Reno in it? Yeah, it's not, not even second, in it. Not a second, not a second of, her. of her. Which I didn't mind, but this is still worse. Yeah, you think Jet Reno would want to be talking crap to that girl? Oh yeah, she would. Yeah. Well, maybe she's in this. Remember, her back was messed up. So oh, she was. Uh, she goes back. What the hell's going on? We were on Earth. I didn't even know. You didn't, didn't even tell, tell me. <laughs> Thank you, guys. God, you're not important enough to know. Because why do I? Because when you get like these, because she's a comedian somewhere. Maybe she had obligations elsewhere. Oh, that's so stupid. I hate when they do that. I that's know, why you don't get like, people that guest not, star. Yeah, just be part of Trek, and that's your thing until you're done with it. I know. But um, yeah. See you guys next week. Um, eh, just okay. Yeah. Exactly.